What's up, Foot Clan? We got a great show for you today. I want to remind you about the Ultimate Draft Kit. We've been working on it all off season. It's updated every day and it gets you ready for your draft. It is essentially tilt insurance. You get into your draft. We all know what that's like. The pressure is on. You start to see that ADP list. You feel the pressure to take the wrong player. We want to get you prepped, get you right, get that foundation for your team built out so you can have a dominant fantasy football season. Check it out. All the tools, resources, all of our picks, all of our projections at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, August 8th, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Happy to be with you. This show wouldn't exist without the Deucers. They're here. Al Borland, Judge Giamatti in the building. Kyle somewhere on the microphone, sprinting back to the microphone. (laughs) Bathroom, kitchen, napping. We, We don't really know anymore. Yeah. If Where he, in the world is Kyle Borgannoni? We used to keep a close eye on him here in the studio, and now he, he's remote on the show, and um, it's just a mystery. He could be doing anything. He could be pre-recorded. I mean, there could be stuff programmed in to say, and he might not even be there. I'm going to see if anyone on Fiverr does Carmen San Diego <laughs> riffs, and I can get where in the world is Kyle Borgannoni. That would be something you would do. Um, I'm going to make a note. What was the name of that band? Uh, Rockapella. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was really their peak. And he had the, oh, yeah. the Rockapella guy had the little... Uh, oh, it's incredible. We have the, like double ponytails yeah. back behind the mullet. Yeah, they are. A mullet ponytail combo. It's, I do not remember this at oh, all. Oh, dude, you got you to gotta look them up. It's incredible. And the story, apparently there was like a... <laughs> there was like a brand new member right before that, that happened. So, you know, a guy was committed to the art of acapella with his group Rockapella and he just he couldn't take it anymore so he bailed out and then they land Carmen San Diego oh man whoops that was uh glad you're listening everyone out there um we got a busy show today top 10 running back rankings continuing the countdown gonna share some deeper running back picks as well at the top of the show and then it'll be all Rockapella from here on out. <laughs> That'll be it. <laughs> no problem with me. Um, UltimateDraftKit.com. We're on X, formerly Twitter, at the FF Ballers. Uh, the community, jointhefoot.com, and the website's thefantasyfootballers.com. The quick question, like I said, um, you know, we're doing these top 20 countdowns at each position. Today we're at the top 10 running backs. I'm sure we'll have some good debates, but I wanted to know a running back well outside the top 20 uh, rankings that you're kind of excited about this season. And, um, you know, one of the players that I brought up I- recently is, is James Cook, who's who's running with the ones in Buffalo, and I've been excited about him. It's not the name I'm going to mention here. I'm, I'm starting to cool off on James oh, Cook. Oh, that's too bad. Um, I was telling Jason this morning, like I, I was talking to um, a couple of the people that cover – Buffalo and I was asking him about what these training camp practices are looking like in particular you know the area that I think is going to be a huge weakness for James Cook is going to be you know opportunities to score touchdowns their full goal line um, reps are half Damian Harris and half Latavius Murray and so that's not good and so if you combine those guys which they're going to be more capable than James Cook in that area Murray has just been really good on the goal line for teams, even when he's perceived over the hill. But then Josh Allen's a goal line back. So I, I'm worried about James Cook being a, a pretty high finisher in fantasy, but a really rough ride. And so I'm cooling a little bit on his fantasy opportunities. But the name I'd bring up right now is Brian Robinson. Boo. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> why. Thank you, Mike. You're you played okay. right into my hands. No. 
You're the voice of public opinion. I, or the booze of public opinion. We are the voice of accuracy. No, I mean, Bri Brian Robinson will 100% be a steal in your draft. Uh, Brian Robinson is the starting running back for the Washington Commanders. You want to talk about Antonio Gibson because he's like sexy. And he's, look, he comes out and says, I'm going to be the third down guy. I'm going to be the J.D. McKissick, which is great. I mean, I think that has a valuable fantasy role. Brian Robinson is going to have a ton of work. Um, over the final five weeks last year, he was 4.5 a carry. He was on pace for 329 carries and 1,500 rushing yards. He was recovering from a gunshot wound. Yeah. Camp reports are great, and there's no debate on that fact that he's the starter. So I want to bring it up because he's the least sexy pick you could ever have. He's a ninth-round draft pick. I saw Brooks nodding in the background. Are you in on Brian Robinson? Hey, and that late in the draft, sure. I mean, this is the RB36 off the board. And so I, I just think he's going to be one of those guys that has a, um, you know, he, he doesn't have a super high ceiling because he's not going to catch a ton of passes. Although training camp reports have talked about him uh, being more versatile, working a lot on the passing uh, down work. We just talked yesterday, not a lot of third downs necessarily, 20% of plays. There's going to be passing opportunities on first and second down. However, it's just total volume. Like if we're talking about volume and you, you have to spend, what, what's Najee Harris? What's that pick? Probably second, third rounder. So your second, third rounder for Najee Harris on a bad offense that. that we say is going to have a bunch of opportunities. He'll catch more passes than Brian Robinson. But the touchdown opportunities. Back of the third. Touchdown opportunities will be there for Brian Robinson. And then you, you draft him in the ninth round. So I think he's just discount Najee. I, I am happy that you're bringing his name up because we haven't spoken well of Brian Robinson. He is seen more so as, you know, just a guy. Uh, an average NFL athlete that, um, you know, is he's got a good pedigree, comes from Bama, but he was kind of buried behind people and wasn't uh, a prolific prospect. That being said, he is the starter. He will touch the ball more than Antonio Gibson, a player that we have talked up. So it's good to get the name out there because... Um, Unless he gets shot again. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'll throw that out for all of the players. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's it one of those things where I'm going to try to avoid if someone uh, before the season or before I draft um, does get shot, I'll probably <laughs> avoid them in my draft. Okay. Right. Um, the player I want to bring up is a guy I really liked as a prospect. I think he was my number four rookie running back before the NFL draft, and that's Tank Bigsby. We have brought his name up as a problem for Travis Etienne, right? That That is what Tank Bigsby is. the only context he's really been brought up in. Right. He's a thorn in the heel of, uh, you know, of a great player. But I think Tank Bigsby actually has a chance to be relevant. This is a player that is, I mean, you want to talk about what round you're getting him in. You, you could probably get him when your draft is over or in your last round. You know, I think on average right now he's like 13th round. He's one of those guys that, uh, will go drafted in some leagues and not drafted in others. But he's been dominating camp. And and not that he's been playing better than ETN. ETN's been great, too, in camp. ETN has been doing goal line work, scoring touchdowns. But Tank Bigsby's been awesome. Uh, I believe their last 11-on-11, 11 11, he had a 70-yard breakaway touchdown where he broke two tackles, ran away from seven defenders. Um, he is... A, a solid player. He's been great in their red zone work as well, pushing piles. Uh, they, there was one play that was reported where he just got stacked up in this crazy pile and somehow broke out the other side for 10 yards. And this is a guy that's going to get opportunities. He's named appropriately. Yeah, yeah. Like his Tank, parents knew. Tank Bigsby. Yeah. I mean, what a cool name. It's Because it's not just like Tank Dell. It, you know, it's like, no. Bigsby's his yeah. last name. He's just, I'm big and strong. Um, it, I, I believe there is an opportunity for him to be a relevant, you know, RB3 flex option this season while ETN is healthy. I don't think he's just an insurance play. However, should ETN, who has missed time already, you know, missed the season with uh, an injury and is coming back, should something happen health-wise... I think Tank will be one of the one of the better backup running backs to roster. So if when have, I'm at the end of my draft, I'm I'm I like taking Tank Tank Bigsby. If you have Travis Etienne as an early pick, 
I mean, wouldn't it be an automatic ad at, uh, with the last pick in your draft? I don't mind that one at all. You know, we talked about whether or not you would do that with the Seattle backfield, but Charbonnet is being drafted as a relevant asset. Uh, it costs a lot. Um, Tank Bigsby, when you can get him basically for free, yeah, sure, throw him on the back of your bench as maybe someone that you could start side by side, but as the insurance play as well. And Bigsby also, for his college production profile, as a pass catcher, like it's there. And so like, that's another threat to Travis Etienne, who we haven't talked about it on, on this pod. I brought it up in the Dynasty podcast. The yet yeah, that ETN had a whole bunch of receptions, you know, at in college and everything. But there was like these weird quotes from Travis ETN talking about this is back then. Maybe he thinks have changed for, since now. But back then he talked about how he was like he's nervous as a pass catcher. He's he is something about he's scared to catch the ball, afraid of making a mistake. And so I maybe he's just not actually comfortable doing that. He said he wasn't, and, and we have Tank Bigsby here who profiles as a player who could be used in that role as well. So that that's another kind of just a red flag there for Travis Etienne. Uh, I'm going to bring up just a, a couple names real quick. It's Rashad Penny for me uh, going in the ninth round. He seems to be the, the Miles Sanders version or the Miles Sanders for the Eagles this year. And Rashad Penny, talent has never been – question for him it's always health and I know it's the same argument over and over ah, I'm not going to draft Rashad Penny he's going to get hurt I'm just laughing at the fact that Penny and Robinson are back-to-back -back ninth round picks and they could both be starters and if you did go zero RB which is right you know, like those could be your two starting running backs in the you'd probably have to take one in the, the eighth. eighth and one in the ninth and you have seven picks ahead of it it's just interesting that there are, are potential volume plays that late in the draft. Yeah, and Rashad Penny is an excellent player. If he gives you anything close to Miles Sanders' production, but you've drafted him in the ninth round, that's a massive win. Like People were disappointed with Miles Sanders being a little bit hot and cold. He still finished extremely well on the, on the year. And if you get that type of production in the ninth, that's absolutely outrageous. And then just a shout-out to – this is – you know we're, we're also watching this in preseason – the Miami Dolphins running backs, who is the main guy? We don't know. Everyone's kind of got to make their their guess here. Devon A. Chain, the rookie, who's very small but incredibly fast. He's dealing with his own injury. And then you have Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. I know Jeff Wilson got banged up the other day, but I think he is I think he came back already to practice. A, a Chain as well is back. Is back? Practice. Okay. Yeah. But it's just these guys are going. They're all three of them are in the double digit rounds. There may honestly not be a clear winner for the entirety of the season, but there's there will be weeks here, and it, it could turn out that one of them actually is just the primary guy who's going to see 12 to 15 opportunities a week. I love I, taking shots on those players. Specifically for me, uh, you, I've, I've talked about A-Chain. I really like him. I think he fits the system perfect, and I love taking a, a gamble on him, but I also love Jeff Wilson in the 13th round. I think he's a value because... It, it, and what what's funny is Mostert is the starter. He's maybe, the starting running maybe, back. Maybe, maybe. No, I mean, it, it is. It, it, go read the camp reports. Like, they're going to share time, but I mean, like, you might get one or two weeks out of Mostert to start the year and be fine and then see different players come out and emerge. But, like, literally, I mean, that's what yeah, Daniels no, I, has said. I, you, so. Sure, I, I guess I'm just going back to last season when they right. were both playing after Wilson was there and they were both healthy. It seemed like Wilson was the more valuable asset the majority of those games. But, yeah, I mean, th this is going to be a valuable running back room and it doesn't cost much. And if one guy goes out, mm -hmm. a Mostert injury history, Wilson injury history, yeah, A chain banged bitty, up, bitty baby, itty baby will be hurt soon. Mm -hmm. Future injury history due to size. <laughs> Future injury oh, yeah. history. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like that. But I mean, like it all of a sudden becomes more simple if one guy is, or or they might use a chain in a different way, and you have two guys on the field, and then you have two guys valuable. Like if it's Mostert and Wilson behind center a lot, and a chain in in passing game work in the slot and end arounds like could be like the Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs situation where sure. you're expecting both guys to be on the field. So that one is they're all free because nobody knows what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and historically that those, those prove to be good shots to take in the draft. It, Just don't, they don't take all the shots. They, don't draft three of them. No, right. you, you call call your shot on the guy you like. I like a chain. Yeah. Or just in, if you're in multiple drafts, 
Take Wilson in one. Take Mostert in one. Take A-Chain in one. Sure. I mean, just like you got to try. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the news because we just got some breaking news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the New Orleans Saints are expected to sign Kareem Hunt to the roster, assuming he passes his physical. So it will be a Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams, Kendra Miller, Kareem Hunt backfield in mm. New Orleans, which is – I thought about bringing Alvin Kamara's name up in the previous segment with a quick <laughs> and, question. And, and you I thought, thought about, about yeah. bringing up Kendra Miller. I'm glad we didn't since while we were talking about them – they signed Kareem Hunt. They really want a committee. Well, and, and they they've dealt. They've got a suspension. They've got injuries historically. Like last year, the guys taking snaps. Mike brought it up. David Johnson, you know Benjamin. They didn't want to have those players running the football last year. And the biggest problem is Kareem Hunt's a great pass catcher. So like you have another versatile option there. Where you look, all the camp reports with Alvin Kamara have been just fire. Like the way they're running this offense, the way they're utilizing him, the fact that he is he is back in form, he was banged up last year. Like I, I do think that there's an opportunity there for him to be an oversight in drafts, not in the fourth round, which I don't think that ADP is right. I, I think if you if you went and you drafted today with a three game suspension, he's not going in the fourth round. So I still am paying attention, but now Kareem Hunt's part of this backfield, and it concerns me for Kendra Miller in year one. That, Kareem Hunt, really? Yeah, it does because you're 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 making a choice to add a veteran, and veterans seem to get uh, a greater deal of respect and opportunity in a backfield than adding a no name. I mean, like Kareem Hunt has been selective this off season. Either you decide he's given up and just taking this job, which maybe that's the case, or they've made commitments and promises to him that say, "Hey, we're going to use you." Yeah, I mean, I can't he, imagine he doesn't want to play. Yeah, he somehow Kareem Hunt led all running backs in the NFL on third down snaps last year. He's he's I don't think he's washed. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, it it does uh, muddy the water. I mean, if Kareem Hunt and went and and joined New England in the context of Ramondre, we'd make adjustments. If he went and joined, you know, another backfield like uh, Minnesota, we would be making adjustments to our view of Madison. So I think it has to at least be talked about I, do, I, I don't know if he fades into the mist because he's washed but it doesn't concern you at all with Kendry Miller or Jamal Williams or it, any of those guys not long I mean Kendry Miller this is a long-term situation like you're drafting him hoping that some opportunities start coming uh like in the second month or so of the season you, like Kendry Miller is not a week one st starting fantasy football running back but I'm just uh, the I thought that all y'all were out on Kareem Hunt last year. Like I was really hoping he got traded, and it was. I mean, I'm out on Zeke, but if he goes somewhere, I, it matters to me. Right. You know, like the other concern is like, yeah, Kendry Miller might develop, but what are you going to do as a fantasy player? You going to put him on your roster on draft day and wait two months? I, you know, it's. I mean, funny. is that the plan? You 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 talk about Kendry Miller as a long term play. Because of the situation with Alvin Kamara, Kendra Miller was one of my favorite later round picks because he might have the opportunity to, to week yeah. one, week two, week three to really establish himself there. And now he he will definitely have to cede some work here to Kareem Hunt. If he goes wild in the first three weeks, that's your Kendra Miller opportunity. Because mm -hmm. you've had that happen with like really talented running backs like Kareem Hunt. First game yeah. in, in the NFL – couple big touchdowns the the pass from Alex Smith I believe and all of a sudden it's like oh he's he's legit like who cares about the combine scores um this was good news for the Chiefs Kadarius Tony and Isaiah Pacheco both expected for week one okay the Tony news is is positive because yes I don't think I think we were like not believing that could be the case which maybe you don't believe yeah. still could miss a couple weeks the Pacheco I mean this is it's this is rough here, though. If you're expected to be ready for week one and you're you're missing training camp, other players are getting their chance to try and make an impact here on, on the running back room. Like Pacheco, you know, post-Super Bowl, it would have been, oh, Isaiah Pacheco is clearly the the starting two-down runner for the Kansas City Chiefs. Is, oh, is yeah. he? I have no worries about him at all. 
Okay. This, the, the way they talk about him in training camp, the way that they've uh, they've expected this surgery and this – like Tony I'm worried about because Tony's missed time, always hurt. Uh, Sky Moore, other wide receivers are making progress. But, I mean, the, the running back room in Kansas City is not an intimidating one in, in any regard. What do you, you worry about uh, Prince? You know, Clyde? I, I still, I still Clyde think Clyde can't do anything to change his status in that room. I, I still think Clyde it will absolutely be. I, I think him and Pacheco will be splitting carries. I, I don't really want a lot of this backfield personally. I think that's fair. I just don't think Pacheco's standing has changed. Uh, Jake Ferguson, the clear number one tight end for the Cowboys. Yeah. The schoon man back in camp. Yeah, he he was. We actually saw the schoon man out there running some routes, but we did talk about Jake first, uh, Ferguson just a couple days ago. Now, he was listed in the first unofficial depth chart because it's unofficial depth chart season. He was listed as a co-starter with Peyton Hendershot, but everything that I've been reading and looking into for the Cowboys, it was Jake Ferguson's going to be the guy this year. And the, I mean, for the schoon man to catch Fergalicious. up, yeah. Oh, it's Fergalicious and the schoon man. It's just, it's, it's sensational for the fantasy footballers podcast. Yeah, we need him to do something, but we could have, uh, we could have drops emerging. We, we absolutely could. Uh, but it, it's like schoon man as a rookie tight end who has basically missed all this time. I don't think he can catch no. Ferguson at this point. Maybe halfway through the season or something like that. But right now, Ferguson is very interesting. For a if you punt the tight end position, yeah, could be one of those surprise week one guys that you're like, oh, two touchdowns for Jake Ferguson. Yep. Didn't see that coming. Drum Ford left practice, hamstring injury, not good. Yeah, no. when you get a new hamstring injury, this at would this, be running back for the Browns. Yeah, yeah. yeah backup running back for uh, the Cleveland Browns, who has been. <clears throat> there's been debate like who's going to be the pass catching third down back. They just lost Kareem Hunt, who had all the third down snaps. And the last thing I saw from the running backs coach was it was going to be either Chubb or Ford. Yeah, it could be Chubb, could well, be Ford. I mean, if yeah. that's the case, if this... Ford is uh, d out with a hamstring issue, this is a really neat opportunity that Chubb is going to get for the first time in his career where he could catch the ball. He could add pass catching to his unbelievable running style and just be a dominant force for fantasy. Yeah, I think I think Cleveland is is primed to give us some fantasy value. Nick Chubb behind him is Jerome Ford, Felton. Who could? I mean, he he'll get snaps in in place of Wait, Ford. John Kelly. John Kelly still is hanging that, out. Is that the John Kelly? That's the that's the of one. Twitter Twitter draft fame. Still hanging out at the fourth fourth spot on this depth chart. Um, but we'll talk about Chubb today. So that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. You can learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Back in a minute. Good old John Kelly. <laughs> there are players that their yeah. entire claim to fame is the pre-first season discussion time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. they're never discussed again. Uh, Spiller. Isaiah Spiller. I, it's the first name that popped into my head, too. It's like uh, farewell. Yeah, they were supposed to be great, but they were not great. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know any that become great after that first year. Really, I mean, it's, it's like it's pretty unlikely. If you're that low in the draft and don't have a good year one, you just are like yeah, you're like going to be a number three running back the rest of your career. Yeah, unless somebody gets hurt and then they can we think of any example? Where a guy who was hyped up and did nothing. I'm is... sure the listeners will, and well, we'll good. Share, will, and we'll share that with us. I'm. I, I don't think they will. I you, don't think, I you don't think you. there are. Any. I don't know if it exists. So fourth, fifth, sixth round running back, who hyped was up hyped in the off season, in the draft season, didn't do anything year one, but then hit, but then hit. Hmm. You got anybody, Brooks? Anybody coming to mind? Kyle, hmm. Kyle, it, oh, run nothing. back on it. Run back to the microphone and see if you can remember. <laughs> Feel free. I'm looking in the spreadsheets right now. Okay. I mean, clear Her Herbert about to do it. I want to believe that Kyle has so. has like printed spreadsheets. These are not on. Oh, the for sure. He is shuffling. He's papers. a tactile man. Yeah. He's I got, need to feel the papers. He's in a room with so many filing cabinets <laughs> right now. I mean, just, he's. <laughs> there, yep, it there, it there it is. There it is. Oh, there it is. Well done. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, you said Kyle Herbert's about to do it, which, mm -hmm. hey, if you want. 
the unofficial, or I mean the official depth charts just came out. Read into them as you will. But right now, it's uh, Khalil Herbert. And then it is um, Foreman, Deonta Foreman, Deonta yep. Foreman, and, and then Roshan, Roshan uh, yeah, third. Well, I will say this: sometimes Roshan I, Moreno. Sometimes I don't care at all about these depth charts, and sometimes <laughs> I do. But when this depth chart came out, I forget which uh, beat reporter I was looking at, but they were basically saying that this should not be any surprise. This is exactly what they've seen in camp. That that is the order of those three. That was very confirming to me that. Like I, I'm just going to trust it. If, yeah. if that's what has been the process over the last couple months, and then the team puts out the official statement saying, "Yep, that's the order," then that should be the order of how we view this backfield for fantasy purposes. Totally agree. A lot of the a lot of the running backs that changed teams this off season were pieces that they almost shuffled depth around, mm -hmm. right? Like Singletary shifted to another team, and then Rashad Penny moved over and. Like you didn't have super high profile um players changing teams. You had a lot of these guys, the Deonta Foreman. Um and the incumbent always has an advantage there. Because the teams are looking at these guys as, you know, we let go of David Montgomery because why? It wasn't because we could add Deonta Foreman in the offseason. It was because we believed in Khalil Herbert. Mm -hmm. So uh all right, let's get into it. Running backs. I mean nobody Loves Khalil Herbert quite like Brooks, though. That's true. It's his 2023 Josh Jacobs. Is He's, it? Is that what he is? I so, guess so. <laughs> He's I good. Mean, he is. You can get him a lot later than Josh Jacobs, too. Yeah, I was going to say he's so much lower down the list than like a Madison in the rankings. Yes. But both of them are like kind of, they have great opportunities. So um, where's Herbert going? Is he is he like? Clear Herbert's in like the ninth round. So he's with our group. Oh yeah, he's with our our boys, Brian yes. Robinson and Rashad Penny, and do add three of them, <laughs> maybe two of them will work out. Uh, Nine twelve for Herbert. So he's he's behind those other two guys. He's a massive value. Okay, running back rankings countdown going through the top ten. Let me give you some information here. Over the last five years, a top 10 running back in half-point leagues has averaged 20.6 opportunities per game. Mm -hmm. so if you want to be top 10, get over that 20 opportunity mark. 17.8 fantasy points per game, 13 total touchdowns. That's interesting to me. Like You really yeah. do need some foundation of, of the Absolutely. getting into the end zone. And 1,589 total yards, not rushing yards, but total yards. You're involved in the passing game more often than not because not a lot of guys rush for over 1,500 yards. That's normally the, uh, what, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, last year Josh Jacobs. Um, not a lot of them get up over that. Mark? All right. Um, at number 10, and uh, we'll talk about him. He's on an excused absence right now. Oh, man. Who is now already our number 11. Yeah, that's true. Because between yesterday's show and today, with the adjustments we make daily on our rankings, he actually fell out. So, I mean, you could just omit him. Because he's living in the, like... Right. He's, he's living in between, in, the, shows. in between shows. Like in the upside down. <laughs> he would have been on yesterday's he's show. In ranking purgatory? Yeah. He's in between shows. <laughs> yeah. It's Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> Who is you got to get me out of here? Potentially in between teams. <laughs> I mean, we don't even know right now, but it's excused absences to now be away from the team when you already weren't practicing with the team. Like this is getting. He's like, I can't even be around you. It's getting scarier and scarier. I can't even be on the footballers podcast. <laughs> he's saying, I, I I'm in between shows, guys. I disappear, smoke bomb. <laughs> so I mean, look, Jonathan Taylor right now is a step one, super talented, highly he's productive, great. potentially dominant. League winning style running back. And he's coming off an injury laden year on a team that doesn't, we don't know if he's going to return off an injury that, look, we've been told he's rehabbing his ankle, which, hello, that was the injury from last year. I can't even hear Jonathan Taylor and ankle in the same sentence without getting, like, sweaty. It is super scary to me because I, I genuinely don't know whether or not this is the ankle because, you know, it's, it's an excused indefinite, you know, amount of time. So it sounds like it's money. It sounds like it's like they're they're having contract. That issues. ankle would feel better if yeah, if, the if ankle were... would be fine if you know he signs an extension. All of a sudden <laughs> sure he'd be back at practice. Practice feel a lot better. But also they're saying you know it's it's the ankle, and if it's the same ankle that he had surgery on this off season and that put him out last year, the timeline says he shouldn't be having ankle issues. So 
it, it's hard to know what to believe here, but it scares me. Like my risk meter goes up with Jonathan Taylor because if he's still dealing with this ankle, I mean, we're four weeks away from the start of real NFL football. Oh, baby. That's just – that's not a great situation. We saw what happened to him last year with the with that injury. So if he's not ready to go, very, very scary. Obviously, the talent, enormous. Um, but we've talked a little bit about how it's difficult to have a running back with a super mobile quarterback. Absolutely. You, it, it changes things. I mean, just – like look at look at the running backs for the Baltimore Ravens. It's not that they're inept at catching passes. It's just what's Lamar Jackson going to do? Is he going to dump the the ball off, or is he going to use his superpower and go run the ball, potentially gaining ten to fifteen yards? It like this is it, Jonathan Taylor is such a difficult player to gauge because he has basically all the red flags that we could think of right now. Injury, contract dispute, mobile quarterback, rookie quarterback. We we on yesterday's show when talking about Miles Sanders gave the stats of like the starting running backs for rookie quarterbacks. If if a rookie plays the entire time, it is hi historically terrible for for the for these running backs. So I am just I am so freaked out by Jonathan Taylor, and he's getting closer and closer. It, of course, maybe he. You're in a draft, you're in your home league, and somehow he falls into the second round, and then, okay, maybe I'm going to take a shot here. But he is rapidly approaching that. I'm just willing to be wrong, and like I, I expect Jonathan Taylor to have a great season, but I'm not I'm not going to inherit that risk on my team. While there's, there's other players that I feel far more confident in in that range that he's going. If you want to mess around with those variables, let me. I'd rather do it in the fifth, sixth, seventh round with a player. Right. Not the cost is so high. Mm -hmm. So we're, we all have them below ADP. I mean, you're, you're staring down Jonathan Taylor or Nick Chubb. Well, what are you doing? I'm going, I'm going Chubb. Nick yeah, Chubb, Chubb for like sure. Derrick Henry. Uh, give taking, me Henry. I'm going Derrick Henry. And then honestly, like I'll take Josh Jacobs with his risk right now over over Jonathan Taylor because at least if he comes back, he's not dealing with any injury. And he's in a system and a head coach that you already are familiar with, and he was highly productive in. Pollard, I'll probably go that direction too over Jonathan yeah. Taylor. You start to get a little bit more upside, uh, mindful when you get around Etienne and Gibbs and and maybe Najee. But yeah, it's it's bad vibes. That's why he's in between shows. He's on rank. He's <laughs> he's in between ranks as well. Uh, at nine, Ramondre Stevenson. I've got him at twelve. Mike has him at three still. Still, we're still there. No I, mean, I feel like this is Hodor. Like you got the hold. <laughs> like how are you keeping this rank? I haven't seen anyone sign yet. I just, it's a wild ranking. Mike and I, or not Mike and I, Jason and I have them at 11 and 12, and I feel like this, that's totally like. That's a lot of respect. That's tons of respect. We're giving him so much respect. He's really, really good, and I understand where Mike is coming from in the sense that you've got a, a workhorse role, a depth chart with nobody there. He's a player that can actually catch the ball very, very well, which is rare for someone that is 225-plus pounds. 17% target share. 17%. And the New England Patriots offense should be better. It's it's a pretty big should, but you're going from from uh, coaches who don't know how to run an offense to Bill O'Brien who knows offense. Like he's not really a, a head coach guy, but he knows what he's doing. And so I, I let's just, talk I, him into Mondre moving him to four. Great. Let's talk him into moving him to four. <laughs> well, I've got maybe, I've got a point for it. Okay. Philly to start the year, then Miami. Tough defense, in my opinion. Tough. Fr uh, right. Front seven. Then the Jets on the road. Ooh. And then you play Dallas's front seven. Can I talk you into moving him to four? Mm, Maybe no. five. Okay, well, let me try, Mike. All okay. right, your All turn, right. Jason. Uh, if you watched the horrifically putrid, stinky offense last year of okay. the Patriots, okay. it was run was by... very generous of you. That was very kind. Uh, by Joe Judge and Matt Patricia. You would watch Mac Jones screaming on the sideline that he wants to be allowed to throw the ball down the field, but mm. every single play developed underneath, and he had to check the ball down over and over and over. And while Ramondre has the ability to be a real good pass-catching back, I think that part of the reason that he was just constantly targeted with these little targets is because the offense was 
not good. I think uh, an offense that opens it up more will throw the ball more to the wide receivers, less to the running back mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So I, I that is one you know systematic difference I see in the Patriots offense that scares me about Ramondre Stevenson keeping that level of a target share. Let alone, and that's while he's alone, not sure. just uh, not just if someone else comes and signs. Yeah, someone else could sign and. Sure, maybe they're going to try to go. Did I get, get you to four? No, but sh maybe they're going to try. I got and go another down. strategy. Maybe they're going to try and go down the field. Right. Okay, Devonte Parker. I'll give you Devonte Parker. Now who? Juju. Down the field to Juju. Tyquan Thornton. But Thornton. <laughs> Thornton may not ever see the field this year. You know what? The I vibes think? for Thornton out of camp have been horrible. Quick detour. Hunter Henry. Underrated. Go on. Sure, I, I'm, and I'm okay with that. But I'm saying like they just they don't have the people to be truly a vertical passing. I game. got a new strategy. Okay, okay. you're a, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a dirty liar. I'm looking at your rankings. Uh -huh. There's no way you're taking them over Austin Eckler. No, I don't. But just because they're ranked here, that doesn't mean I have to draft them that way. I'm still going to be. Yeah, I'm still going to use the eighty. No, 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 no. I'm still going to use the ADP because I know that because you can get Ramondre. In the I know third. that chumps like you are like oh, Ramondre oh, is oh. the RB twelve. Oh, I'll be like, yeah, you're right. You guys are sure oh, right. Oh. Don't don't you you better draft him as the running back twelve because I'm going to get Austin Eckler and then I'm, things are going to come back and I'm still going to get Ramondre. Okay, I, that's a fair point. Um, <laughs> look, I I do think they're going to add a, ba a back to this team. If they don't, Ramondre has the potential to finish. Higher than where I have him ranked. I'll put it that way. I look, we're at ADP. Jason and I are full respect, third sure. round pick, top of the third. Um, it is harder to stare that name down than it is Chubb, Jacobs, Henry. Yes. Yeah, and, and I'm not I have him projected to finish there, but again We're not you, out. We're only out compared to Mike. You right. need to be smart about where you are drafting guys. And then my final here for Ramondre Stevenson, Jason, to talk you into moving him up. Oh, okay. Oh, oh all right. Oh, I'm boy. listening. I'm listening. The round mound of touchdown. <laughs> I love the name. He's going to 10. He's going to <laughs> That's all it up? took. That's oh, all gosh. it took. We're fickle people. <laughs> all these great arguments we're making. <laughs> that can't move the needle. But round mound? Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, the round mound of touchdown. Yeah. It's I like good. it a lot. Like, like it a lot. Like a 17%. If you're saying Ramondre Stevenson could potentially hit a 65% market share on the ground and a 15% target share, those are if sensational If you give him 70 numbers. receptions, we'll be wrong. Yeah, 100%. Which is I mean, what it, he was on pace for during the back half of last year. Tony Pollard Tony. coming in at number eight. Tony. Tony. 26 years old, darling of the fantasy underrated world for a couple of years. He's great. He's not underrated anymore. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Tony, the oh, yeah, yeah, no, no we, we got, got you. Okay. Got you. How's the forty? How, how are your forties treating you? <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. In my, uh, you're talking about my time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm not. Uh, RB nine by ADP. I got him at seven. Mike at six. Jason at nine. Um, he is explosive. He is valuable. They have not added more backs. They have really subtracted this offseason. Uh, Malik Davis. <laughs> what you, what's, what'd you get? Uh, oh, Kyle put Deuce's, Deuce Vaughn's name in in like size four font, man. <laughs> it, everybody else's name is normal. Aww. And Deuce Vaughn's written in, in like size. Let's check this out. Oh, man, that's real small. Um, Ronald Jones suspended. Will Tony Pollard really get this amount of work? Does it make any sense to give him this amount of work? Because his efficiency will inevitably go down. If he's the guy that's going to get the fourth and one, if he's the guy that's going to be in on goal line, you're not going to see the yards per carry. You're not going to see the those uh, numbers as high, but he would still be very valuable. I know we have the fears of the Lamar Miller efficiency mm -hmm. change that happened. He was the most dynamic back in the world in Miami, and then he goes to Houston, and he's a starter, and it's different, and... We know they're going to throw the ball a lot. We know that that's kind of the M.O. for Mr. Kellen Moore. So, you know, if Tony Pollard is who he has been and you just proportionally move up his opportunities, he's the RB1, okay? I mean, that's the, sure, yeah, that's I the truth. Like, he'd be the RB1 if you just 
he took his efficiency and just gave him twice as many opportunities. Yeah, if he, if he stays, you know, carrying at 5.2 a clip and getting almost 10 yards per reception and then you just take the volume and you move it northward, absolutely. He's an electric back that's going to get a lot of opportunity. The easiest way to to articulate that is to say last year with Ezekiel Elliott getting a ton of work, Tony Pollard finished as the running back seven and he missed a game. So he should be better than that this year, but that's just not how football works. It's not, we've seen this situation plenty of times in the past. And when he is now the dude, I have no doubt that he will get more work because he only had what? 193 carries last year. He'll mm -hmm. be in the two hundreds. Is but, it 220 or is it 250? Uh, you know, it's probably closer to the 220. I don't, I don't think Tony Pollard it's is just built. Fine. Yeah, that's that's fine. If his if his if his passing work stays the same, I mean, obviously he's on this top ten show because we think he's a really really good back. But I I am skeptical that he will be able to keep the efficiency for a team that I think will be worse on offense, worse you know, offensive coordinator wise. Um, I, you know, it's one of those things where I was really really hot for Tony Pollard at the beginning of this off season when it looked like you know, when they let Zeke go. And it seemed like he was going to have the show to himself. I was like, this is a top five guy locked in. And the more I've thought about it, the more I realize, like, he's probably a back half running back. Let, one. Let, let me correct something I said earlier. I inferred Kellen Moore was there this year. Kellen Moore is departing. Correct. And this offense is going to be potentially, like you said, you don't like the output as much moving to Schottenheimer, defensive oriented. But um, but Pollard's still the guy in the offense. He's still the guy. He's incredibly talented. He's explosive. He's the type of running back that can hit a 50-plus yard touchdown, and that's not every single running back in the NFL. If, if we get the numbers from 193 to that 220 area, and then, like, last year Zeke was about a 5% target share. I I mean, and and uh, Tony Pollard was sitting at an 11%. If you if that 11 bumps up just a couple percentage points, you know, 13, maybe four, maybe we get that 14, but just up to 13% or so, looking at the depth chart where it is right now, that seems like a, like, I don't think that's a wild proclamation to say Tony Pollard, who was the number two behind Ezekiel Elliott, gets 30 more carries and gets 2% uh, higher in the target share. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say, and yes, the the he won't be as efficient if he is the main guy every each and every single week. But he's just such an incredible player that I think that Tony Pollard has he has top three upside, and that's what we want. We want yeah. act, guys who can actually finish in the top three. I want to take the chance on. He does definitely have that upside, and when you're taking him, and and he's what at the back of the second round right now. So where he's going, I, I think there is value to go northward. But if he if he goes from eleven percent target share to thirteen percent target share, it's still possible he stay he doesn't go northward in total targets because the the pace of play for this team and the passing possible, volume could sure. be down. There have been ten running backs with fewer than six hundred fifty touches in the first four years and uh had the opportunity to make the jump. Only one of them really made the jump, Austin Eckler. Had a fantasy finish. His best one was six. He jumped up to two. Uh, the rest, Kenyon Drake and Tevin Coleman and C.J. Anderson and Mark Ingram and uh, even Jamal Charles, his first year going up in opportunities. You don't generally see a fantasy finish higher. I think what you said there, I think he's going to stay around the same finish, which is where he's being drafted, and I think that that's, um, that's a good year from Tony Pollard. Yes. I mean, that is delivering on draft value. And he gives you – gonna say he he gives you actual spike weeks this won't just be a consistent oh he's pretty good no he he will give you week winning weeks it's the minute. Yeah. It's but back the, to tony pollard it's the what i was going to minute <laughs> number seven <laughs> Bijan robinson being drafted now as the rb3 yeah baby jason and i have him at five mike at nine oh, uh, i'm too low he, three might be right here with Bijan. i mean it, it, the equation with B. John Robinson is is pretty simple for fantasy. There aren't many that get to do what he'll get to do. So, you know, you've got to be the you gotta be Saquon, right? Mm -hmm. Historically. You've got to be McCaffrey. Um you know, that's the list is not long. I mean, it because when you start to look at it and you go, Okay, well it's it's not a Chubb situation because he's gonna catch a ton of passes. It's not Henry who's been ranked up there. It's not 
uh, Alvin Kamara even from days gone by where he was a top three because Kamara had, you know, it was always 181 carries. Yeah. 182 carries. Um, maybe 200. This is 250 carry potential with 70, 80, 90, 100 target potential. That's just <laughs> worth the investment. Jason yes. is getting a little I, bit. I'm so is excited. it verklempt? I've. Whew, is it hot in here? Uh, look, uh, I was obviously a, a massive fan of Bijan pre-NFL draft. We had the whole Bijan minute, the Bijan watch for the NFL draft. I was so excited. Loved where he landed. And then I spent some time really thinking people are going a little too nuts here for this rookie that we haven't seen, taking him third off the board. That's too high. And I have since changed if you want to take him one you take him one i don't i i, I believe I he agree is with that i think that's fine i believe he's a player that is as good a pure running back as there is in the league i mean the the chubb and henry style is different and and better in a bruising way but he is as good a running back as there exists and he is christian mccaffrey levels of pass catching as a running back the, he's elite in both. He has the draft capital that says they're going to feed him the rock. You look at this team last year, and the, the biggest knock is, well, they're, they're probably not a great team, a great offense. Desmond Ritter, is he really going to be able to support a lot? But you just look at last year with potentially an even worse Marcus Mariota, and team-wise, the Atlanta Falcons running game was awesome. You, you put uh, Cordero Patterson and, and uh, Huntley and – uh, Algier together and they were excellent so I don't have any problem like I've got him ranked at five that's probably around where I will draft him but if you want to take him ahead of anyone I don't mind it because I think he has the potential to be the number one player in fantasy There's, this year the schedule's really nice the schedule's good you don't have like you know I was trying to look at the back half of the season because if you combine generally rookies coming out of college like there's a potential when they get the opportunity from week one it's a long season in the NFL. It's longer than the, than the college game, and you'd say, okay, sometimes these guys tire out a little bit. Maybe the schedule at the end of the season has a bunch of tough matchups combined with him having a lot of work. I mean, that is something that happens, but it's pretty juicy. You're not busting. Like, it's a, it's a bust-proof pick, and um, we've got him at seven. Like, we're below ADP, so the reasons for that, it's, you know— it, part of it's the confidence in the offense and, and those opportunities. We don't know how they're going to work in the other backs. Sometimes you you do that when you've had the kind of success that they have had. On, you know, they were a great running team last year. Algier over 1,000 yards. Like, you know, there's some unexpected variables because we haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. Mike, you're the lowest, so I, give, I me, just give me the – oh, okay. I just I said I'm, I'm too low on him. I, I just went and looked. I gave him uh, you know, just a couple more percentage points uh, – on the ground in a in a uh, point or two for the target share. What and can go wrong? A bunch of three and outs it, all year long. It, to me, that and, that's a concern. And and the it, other thing that could go wrong is Tyler Algier and Cordero Patterson are used just more than we want. Right. That that that's really the outlet. It's not a talent, and he's not gonna he's not gonna be bad. Like if if Algier is involved, this isn't gonna be like oh he's the running back twenty three. I I don't see a world where he's outside of the top twelve. Josh Jacobs comes in at six now. Uh, I've recently moved him down a little bit because yeah, of the I variable did. factors. Um, he's the RB8 by ADP, so we're still a little bit above that. Um, he was completely unstoppable last year. You can go watch the film. Uh, it wasn't an isolated play here or there. It was every down, every play, all year long, better than you. Fifth most rushing yards over the last decade at the position. Those are... Those kind of numbers, that kind of efficiency over that many touches is not an accident. I don't know why some people seem to think it is. You can't rush for 4.9 a carry on that many chances. On 340 rushing attempts. Yeah, and have 1,653 rushing yards, and it's a fluke. Like, that's not a, that's not possible. Not that it's, like, going to change your view or fantasy ranking because it's just this is a list for fun, but, you know, they – the NFL does their top 100 players every offseason. Players vote on this. Josh Jacobs was number 12, as in the player said he was the 12th best player in the NFL last year. Yeah. Not running back. Right. Player. player. Not offensive player. 
all positions. In fact, one spot in front of his teammate, Devontae Adams. So that's how much so, respect the, the players had for him. We've talked a lot about these guys. I'm trying to find different angles to discuss them than we have in the past. So for Josh Jacobs, his ADP right now is the back of the second round, and he's the RB8. Scoop him up, man. Scoop him up. That's my my opinion is he is absolutely going to play as a Raider this year. Well, I'll that, just be surprised. Okay. And so, if that's if that is your belief, as it is my belief, then a, the back of the a scoop, he's is, a scoop. is a, a, a screaming value because w if that comes to fruition and he is the starting running back week one through week 17, barring injury, they're going to just do it again. They're not, they're not going to be like, hey, I want to split time with Zamir White because you're having a good camp. He's on a franchise tag. He, he's not their long-term future. It's, and he's the best player to win games. They're going to put him so out there. Passes. They're going to put him out there. They're going to throw the ball to him. They're going to let him carry the ball. I mean, you, you look at the snap percentages last year. It was like beginning of the year was like 60%. You know, he was like the lead back. And then they're like, let's just, let's just have him be out there 85, 90% of the snaps. He's really good. I think they do it again. Which, I mean, you, you almost are forced to if you're Josh McDaniels because you are potentially going to lose your job again as a head coach. Um, I was going to ask the question, Mike, real quick, that other angle of tomorrow he's in camp. What happens to his average draft position? Uh, I think it goes up slightly. I don't think that it, w it will skyrocket by any means because <clears throat> despite him having a, a great season and you know historically he's been really solid for fantasy, that – he was the RB8 in 2020, but this was the, the first elite season we've ever seen from Josh Jacobs. So you're, you're going to have a lot of the fantasy football population that's like, it was, that was a one-off. He won't be as good this year. And like, I, oh, I've seen, I have I've seen him, even more extreme. I've seen he sucks. Well, that's a silly thing to say. Because yeah, like, I have my concerns that maybe that was just a, a magic season because that that does happen in the NFL. Players who are good, they just have one outlier, incredible season where everything bounced their way. Uh, you know, stayed healthy for the entire 17 games, stayed healthy despite that workload that he was getting. And I would, to play devil's advocate, Jason, I, I think that Josh Jacobs not being in training camp, it really is giving Zamir White a huge opportunity. The notes have been, have been strong on him. He was a, uh, I believe Kyle was a fourth, fourth round. Fourth round pick. He was a fourth round rookie last year, so that's a day three pick. That's generally that's nothing to be scared of for a, especially as a rookie. But now it's another year in the system, and they're he's getting all of the opportunity to shine and try and and convince the 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 coaches you got to get this guy on the field. So I I think that is a it is a potential red flag here for Josh Jacobs. I think Jacobs is is great. But I'm starting to – the longer he holds out, the more concerned I will more be skittish. that Zamir White will factor in way more than he did last year. He's got to look a lot better on the field than he did last year. That yes. That's got to be the difference, and they have a Abdullah in, in company. Number five, Saquon Barkley. He is in camp. He is back on the franchise. Tag, wink, wink. Um, RB4 by ADP. Jason, you're the highest at, at number three. Don't really blame you there, but why do you love Saquon? Well, I just love any player that, you know, he, he doesn't have question marks. Now that he's in camp, he signed that contract. He has no competition. He yep. catches the ball. He's very talented. He's good, good head coach. Yeah, I mean, he's going to touch the ball 350 plus times for sure. Like, uh, that that's just a gimme um, uh, outside of being injured. And if you know you're going to touch the ball 350 times, you go, okay, well, is the player talented? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's he's pretty darn good. He might not be as good as he was his rookie season, but he's not an elder statesman by any means. He's 26 years old. He's still playing like he's in the prime. He was great last season, you know, missed a game, finished as the running back six. So it, to me, I, there's very little to worry about here. You know he is a workhorse back. There are, you can count them on one hand right now in the NFL. So I'm all about taking Saquon. At four, Derrick Henry is still... Here, still doing it. Mike and I both have Tennessee winning this division. Uh, they seem rejuvenated. Hopkins, Traylon Burks, healthy. Uh, Ryan Tannehill's back. Derrick Henry, we have him ranked three spots ahead of ADP as a group. And um, look, everyone's waiting for the shoe to drop. But last year, all you did was get a season with 6% busts, despite the fact um, that the team was bad. They have a bad offensive line, at least according to Pro Football Focus, going into the year. 
but he still ended up as the RB4. Yeah, it's Derrick Henry is a, a fascinating player. Has I mean, one the the check mark in his uh in his favor last year we saw 41 targets. Like this was the first time ever that Derrick Henry has seen a 10% target share. It has climbed the last 3 years, 7, 8%. 10%. And Derrick Henry is he is going to be a polarizing draft pick because it's just you have to make your decision of this guy who's going to turn 30 on a team while I have them winning the division. I'm, I don't think this is like a this isn't a juggernaut of 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 a football team. They drafted a uh a, the backup running back Tajay Spears. They he was a third rounder. Am I right on that, Kyle? Uh you can yeah, he's a day two pick. He was a day two pick. So there's that going against Henry, and it's just make your choice. Are you – Looks do, like you made you, yours. Do you think that Derrick Henry has one more year to transform into the Yeti and wreak havoc for fantasy football? And that's just – that's where my projections have gone. You got him at number two right now, which makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, Nick Chubb comes in at three. That's exactly where I have him. Jason at four, Mike at five. We, we talked about him at the top. Um, he's going to have every opportunity. I think the offense is going to be vastly improved personally. Um, Nick Chubb is as proven as it gets on the ground. Like, you know, he's going to get chunk plays, breakaway plays. The question is, can he ramp up that receiving work? I think, I think he will have opportunities. Now there is a chance that it doesn't work out as well for him as we'd like. Like it's one thing to say, Hey, I'm going to throw the ball a lot to Derrick Henry. It's another thing to kind of Every once in a while, you chuckle because it like <laughs> deflects off his hands. He's not the most elegant pass catcher. So, is it Nick Chubb's greatest strength? It's not. But if those opportunities come, like he proved last year, even without them, he was the best pick in fantasy at running back for the first what nine, ten, eleven weeks. Yeah, something like that. How many weeks was it until uh, Deshaun Watson? Came it was uh, very correlated. Yeah, it was ten. Yeah, and and he just struggled with touchdowns after that point because yep. his team was not down around the goal line. So. Um, you know, he, he's the, the, the Browns last year with the struggle at quarterback at the end of the season were a good example of what could be a red flag for a Bijan. You, you, if, yeah, but he's got the insulation of pass catching. Yeah. The, the, the pass catching here for Chubb is the really exciting thing in 2023. You've lost Kareem Hunt's, uh, 40 plus targets and you have Chubb right now. You know, obviously it's it's small, it's anecdotal, but you know you you keep seeing a video out of camp right now, catching the pass out of the backfield, and it's just nice to see that they are involving him in that way in camp right now. <laughs> I've got him going just ten more targets than last year. He had thirty seven last year, forty seven this year. Forty seven would be great, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if you if you're telling me he's around fifty targets when he's a fifteen hundred yard, ten touchdown rushing machine. Yeah, I'm I'm fully in on Nick Chubb. The, for the rushing first time machine ever. is the best name you could ever give Nick Chubb. I'm making yeah. a note. He is the rushing machine. Yeah. yeah, you just put a coin in and you get the same thing every game. The dude for his career, he's played five years in the NFL. Is he still over five? He's at five point yeah, three. He's still over five. He's played for five years. <laughs> All right, at number two and number one, I'm gonna lump them together here, guys, because they do the same stuff which is everything. Austin Eckler at number two, Christian McCaffrey at number one. That's why Bijan is Bijan. It's like the only the only guys in the league that do everything is Austin Eckler and Christian McCaffrey and, and Saquon and Bijan. Yeah, and, and also the draft capital for Bijan, like the players that are drafted there, they always seem to do it. I mean, uh, I guess Fournette really didn't, um, but he still had a pretty good rookie season, right? And then, yeah. but McCaffrey did, Zeke did, um, those those early Barkley. running backs do it, Barkley. But Austin Eckler last year, uh, dominant yet again. He's had 36 red zone touchdowns in two years. Um, you know, his own quote on how important this season is because he's, he's looking for that cash money. Yeah. And uh, he said, this season will be one of the most impactful seasons I've ever had. Like, I believe him because he's got that capability in this offense. Variable, new offensive coordinator. Kind of, uh, he's been a, extreme efficiency touchdown score. That's the thing that Mike's brought to light. I mean, Jason, and I have him at two. Mike's got him down a little bit. I have to believe that that is entirely related to eh, a little bit of uh, regression touchdown wise. Yeah. It's just, I mean, yeah, he's done it for his basically his entire career, but it, but just 
betting on a you know a little return down to uh, more of a league average. Not that Austin Eckler is any in average player by any stretch, but just take some of the efficiency down and then some of the targets down, which his targets last year were absolutely incredible for fantasy football. But you were missing Keenan Allen for a huge chunk of the season. You would miss Mike Williams here and there. They made the investment on Quentin Johnston to kind of back that uh, back that wide receiver up or the wide receiver room up and have a healthy guy out there on the field. So that that's all that's happened for me. But Eckler is a like you want to take Eckler number one in the draft. It doesn't bother me. I like so my ranking is not a besmirching of Austin Eckler uh, at all. I just have some other guys projected a little bit higher. When you're great and there's no one else on the depth chart and you play for a great offense with a great quarterback and a nice offensive coordinator, you're just safe. And that's what he is. He doesn't. He's not going to catch as many passes this year as he did last year. What you're talking about, Mike, when he, when he was on the field with all with, with Mike Williams, Keenan Allen healthy, his target share was vastly different than when one of those were missing. But he doesn't need to. You know, he had 127 targets this last year. <laughs> two years ago, oh, man. two years ago, he only had 94. That's probably closer this, to where he'll be this year. But he was the running back too. This defense has always been a defense of promise, not return. And so because of that, they've had to come back in games. And he is the quintessential. He can get you eight receptions on like two drives at the end of the game. It's so nice. And so if the defense isn't stepping up, that would be – that's my area of – like if, if they're in the lead of more games, I think you're going to see a couple things with Eckler. Less pass catches. Um, is that even a phrase? Less pass catching. And also potentially some time off the field. I mean, they do want to try to work people in. McCaffrey comes in at number one. He His quote this offseason, it's great mastering the 49ers offense rather than learning it on the fly. Oh. A recent article from The Athletic said the 49ers' dedication to throwing to their tailbacks this summer makes you think a 1,000, a 1,000 is well in the cards for Christian McCaffrey. It's been the major theme of the offseason. Um, I've talked often about finding the time to cash in on a running back in Dynasty for huge hauls. I thought about it with McCaffrey. You know, I, I, I then thought about it again. And and so I unthought about that. But then you were like, I'd like to win, though. I was like, this <laughs> this year is going to be so, so, so good yet again for Christian McCaffrey. He's better than everybody else. People want to bring up the fact that in the games that Elijah Mitchell played, he wasn't as good. They do not. That does not concern me at all. There is touchdown variables that were in play in those games. He is going to be so incredibly dominant. Um, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know. No, he was it, the, the splits with Elijah Mitchell and without Elijah Mitchell were real and they were drastic. They were snap percentages, carries across the board. But with Elijah Mitchell, he was the running back one. It, it, it was just without without Elijah Mitchell, he was the super. He was the running back zero. <laughs> yes, he was the running back zero. He so, currently hurt again, yeah, Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. Right. You're you're there's there's no there's no worries with Christian McCaffrey. He's my number one overall pick. I'll take him over Justin Jefferson, which is not what ADP is doing right now. Uh, I just like I, having a player that is like no one else. I applaud the fact that that statement is what the 49ers team thought. I would like a player that's not like anybody else. Let's go get the best player in the game at the position and just put him on our football team. Like, this is the most fantasy football move ever. It was. Like, just we're, we need to go and upgrade this part of our team. So, yeah, McCaffrey at number one. That'll do it for today's episode. On Wednesday, we got the quarterback rankings countdown. Thursday, we're into preseason power-up. We're going into a full week of preseason football. Hold your breath on the injuries. Try to enjoy the eight snaps the starters get this week. Mm -hmm. We'll be looking at what some of these rookies, the opportunities they get, the fact that you're going to see the uh, Tajay Spears um, and other backs like that get a chance to – Roshan Johnson, get a chance to get on the field um, and see some snaps the way we did with Israel uh, Abanakanda and company. Mock draft on Friday as well. Ooh. Live show in L.A. on – August 26th, come see us, ballerslive.com. Yeah, and then uh, check out the Ultimate Draft Kit if this wasn't enough for you today, which I know it wasn't. It's just an hour. Never enough. You've got more hours in the day, ultimatedraftkit.com. <laughs> Back tomorrow with another episode. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.